Welcome to this PSA TFM presentation. PSA stands for Platform Security Architectures. And in fact, it's an ARM initiative which establishes a general method for securing devices from the very start of the product life cycle. It covers the entire IoT ecosystem, from silicon vendors up to cloud providers. And as you can see, ST is involved as silicon vendor. This initiative started in 2018 with Harm Hanon's first version of PSA certification. This, uh, this uh, platform security architecture is made up of four key stages analyze, architect, implement, and certify. You can find many details at this address. If I just sum up these four steps in analyze documentation, you will find three uh, TMAC, which stand for Threat Model and Security Analysis. It's three different examples done for each IoT, where they identify what are the assets they want to protect, what are the threats, and how to mitigate them. So it's a full security analysis. An architect will find documentation about the security architecture's definition. In the implementation, you will find some API definition, but also you will have documentation about implementation. And you also have a full release of uh, an example of implementation, which is a TFM. I will just detail this after. And the last step is a certification, which ARM defined with some uh, labs how to certify your product and define three levels of certification from level one up to level three. So level one is just self-declarative. Level two is done by uh, labs uh, with some security test or attack and a level three which advanced attack. For the STM32L5, we have been certified level two. So now let's define what is TFM. So this implementation of the PSA on the Cortex M33 for the moment, we don't focus yet on the L5. So we based on Cortex M33, so we've got isolation from trusted and untrusted mode with trust zone. So what is the component of the TFM? First, we have the first software block, which is a SBSFU, Secure Boot, Secure Firmware Update. I think now, after the presentation of the first part, you know what is a Secure Boot and what is a Secure Firmware uh, uh, Update. The other block is all those ones. So all those things, I would say, a secure OS or something like that on some security services that could be called by the non-secure part, some some thumbs API. So I will detail after all those services which are defined uh, by PSA and how they can be used by the interested part. What is important to see is that the TFM SBSFU is immutable and can be updated, but this portion of code could be updated. In blue, you've got what is defined by PSA, the different services, and in green is the where you can put your own secure function you want to be available for the non-secure parts. And of course, the last block is the application firmware. I will detail after the different block. Now let's talk about isolation. PSA define three levels of isolation. The first one is the isolation between the secure and non-secure. So, quite simple. Isolation level two will drive to put an isolation between what is defined by the TFM or the PSA and what is available for a third party. And the level three is the isolation between the different third party function. Today, the TFM have been only supported uh, isolation level two, I mean at harm level. So in our device or on the STM32L5, we also use the isolation level two. Just a warning, previously I told you about the certification level, which is from level one up to level three. There is no link between certification level and isolation level, okay? This is quite important because sometimes there is some confusion on people. 
So some detail about this TFM. So first TFM stands for Trusted Firmware for Cortex-M. So it's a reference implementation of the PSS standard on the Cortex-M uh, CM33. The current version support level of isolation 1 and 2, so now this should be clear for you, and ST ported the TFM core on the STM32L5 with isolation level 2. So let's come back on the different software break, and now I just explicit a little bit how we do the isolation level 2. Level 1 is done by the trust zone, and in fact the level 2, which is this one, is done by the privileged and unprivileged mode of the MPU. Okay? So let's detail each block. First, we've got the TFM SBSFU. So the functionality secure boot, secure firmware update. So secure boot, ensure about the signatures of secure application before launching it and ensure the, secure, the signatures also or the integrity and the authenticity of the unsecure application. This is mainly the purpose of Secure Boot. It will also check, I will say, the security of your platform. Secure firmware updates can detect that a new firmware needs to be installed, a secure one or a non-secure one. In fact, this is based also in, uh, on um, an open software sources, which is MCU Boot. And you can find details about this boot mechanism at this address with all the documentation. This one is immutable, this means it can be modified and it can be updated. Okay. The second binary, I will say, will be the secure application, so this portion of code and this one, and the non-secure application, which is an other application. What are the different services? So first we've got the GFM core, which is a kind of, I will say, secure OS, which handle the different uh, requests. Let's talk about the secure storage. So secure storage, it's uh, a services, so it's got an API, which allow to encrypt data and to write the result in a non-hardware protected storage. So that means the non-secure application could request to store something in a location where it's not hardware protected, so need to be encrypted before. There is another storage services whose name is internal trusted storage. And this time we will store the data in clear somewhere where it's protected by hardware. In fact, it could be in the flash protected thanks um, trust zone, for example. Then we've got cryptography services. So again, some API which allow you to encrypt, decrypt and such kind of thing. And it's based on embed crypto open source software. And the last one, which is initial attestation, maybe more complicated to explain, but let's try to do it. It's allow um, a server to uh, identify or authenticate uh, the device. Let's try to explain it, um, how it will work. Uh, on the security part, you will receive a challenge from a server. That means just a numbers. And you will give it to this API, initialization, initial attestation, sorry. So with this challenge, we'll concatenate information of your platform. For example, uh, version, the lifecycle state, the, secure, the secure binary hash, the unsecure binary hash. You will put all those things together and you will sign it inside the secure parts with a private key. And then you will return this value. This is the initialized attestation services. Then this value could be sent to the server who have the public key that can check the signatures and have all the information about the status of your platform. Third-party services are where you can implement uh, your own, I would say, secure uh, API. Um, today, it's empty, even at the PSS specification on GFM example. So it's ready, but not empty when delivered. Now about the protection. Uh, I would like in this slide to show you what are the hardware protection that we use or hardware mechanism of the L file that we use to protect the different functionality. CSBSFU Secure Boot needs some services, well-defined unique boot entry, the root of trust, hardware unit key, it's a key that should be used and should be unique by uh, each, implement, uh, each device, 
initial attestation info, it's what I just summed up with uh, the services. We've got secure firmware updates, which need also some services. And here is the hardware mechanism that we can use to protect. For the unit book entry, for sure, we rely on bootlock mechanism. So it's a static protection, which allows you to ensure you always boot from uh, the same uh, location. For the router trust and mainly everything except the anti rollback counter, we will use a right protection of the flash. The I protect, so I protect is also secure mem. That means after the execution of the secure boot, once he has finished to do the secure boot process, it will disappear and can't be seen anymore by uh, the rest of the system. We will use also the MPU in mode privilege. We will use the trust zone secure protection and RGP level one at least could be also RGP level 2. As you can see, anti rollback counter is not right protect because this one will be updated when we install a new version. For the services that could be updated um, thanks to secure firmware update, so here we've got also other mechanism. Uh, for the crypto operation, we've got and accelerators, so hardware accelerator of asymmetric cryptography and the symmetric cryptography. Here you can see we use a RTC backup register on SRAM for encryption key because they are thinned by the secure boot, or shared by the secure boot. Because as I said before, the secure boot will disappear after its execution, but need to transmit some key value or some secret value to the services. And this will be done thanks RTC backup register that are protected and also the SRAM. And the SRAM have some additional mechanism when you are on RDP level 1. If there is an intrusion, it will be a RAS. RTC backup register uh, could be secure or not. Then you can see MPU privilege still for the services, trust zone and RDP level 1. And we use the MPU and privilege to isolate the application updatable PSR root of trust regarding the services. So, ST delivers for you a full TFM and there is some features. What are the things that you can configure on what you get with this software? First, you've got three versions of crypto scheme authentication. You can use RSA 2048, RSA 3072 or elliptic curves. For the integrity, we've got the SHA-256. For the confidentiality, we use ISTR with a symmetric key, which is encrypted in ERESA or in uh, elliptic curves. We are in dual slot mode. So dual slot mode, that means you've got a slot for execution and a slot for the download. Dual image mode, that means you've got one image for the secure application and one image for the non-secure application. External memory support of OTF deck. So only the secure application primary slot is in internal flash. It's allowed to give a lot of space for your application. But I will show you this in the next slide with the memory map. In green, I put the default config. That means you can change RSA to this one or to the elliptic curves. You can deactivate the external memory if you don't have an external memory. And that's it for the SBSFU blocks. The services, so we've got the PSI isolation level two. We've got all those cryptographic services and you can use a software crypto or mix it software and hardware. And this is configurable. In the solar attestation token I, uh, services, I told you about this. For the TQ storage, here we use a HIOS GCM and internal trusted storage. We also deliver a TFM local loader, which is just an application which is responsible to download and that is standalone. It's an example. You can activate it or not. It's up to you. If you don't activate it, you can have the loader inside your user application. The memory layout. So here you can find in the internal flash. So this is a default configuration, of course. So in the secure part of the internal flash, you've got the TFM SBSFU boot, some secure non-volatile data that is needed. The TFM API secure where you've got all the TFM services and you've got this possible local loader.
that can be cooled by the SBSFU. And in the external flash, we can put the happy non secure on the downloading slot. Now, if you don't need all the security services of the GFM, for example, you just want to do a SBSFU, you don't want to have the full GFM. In fact, we deliver for you uh, packages with SBSFU boot with an example of the GFM where we remove all the security services and this allows to give you more space and also to have different functionality. I will detail this right now. So this SBSFU boot now is, has got the same authentication possibility, SHA-256 uh, also, confidentiality is the same mechanism, but now you can be in single mode or in dual mode. So in single mode, that means the downloading slot is also the execution slot. That means when you download something, you will erase your current firmware. That implies you need an external loader. That means the loader can be inside your application. But we also deliver an example. The second possibility is to have one image mode. That means you combine the secure and the non-secure binary into one firmware or one image with one metadata set. That means one signatures. So this is again something that you can configure. So I put in green what is configured by default in the package when we deliver it. We're still delivering a secure application, which is just a secure LED blinking example. That means uh, services that you can call from the non-secure application to just made a LED blinking. And we deliver for you also a local loaders, but this time this local loader will need to have a secure and non-secure part. Mm, do you know why? In fact, remember, here we've got in possibility of one slot, that means a local loader will need to write in the secure flash and in the non-secure flash. And to access a secure flash, you will need to have a services to write in the secure flash. And it will be what it will be inside the secure portion of the application. The SBSFU will be immutable, that means you can't update it, and it's rely on Y modem in our example. The memory layout, so in the cage of single slot, so that means, you know, remember, the same slot is used for execution or for downloading. One image, that means we combine just the happy secure and the non-secure application in just one image. We've got our secure loader at the end, and portion of it will be in secure parts and the portion will be in the non-secure part. Local loader and SBSFU are immutable. Here I give you again the same picture as before regarding GFM. With the SBSFU, we just have the SBSFU block. block. We've got this local loader that is inside the privilege and trusted and also in the privileged trusted part, just for the services, the LED blinking on your application. So, as you can see, local order is not uh, updatable. CSBSFU is immutable <coughs> also. Okay. Now about the package. Um, as you can see in the Cube L5, now you've got for the Nucleo, we deliver only the SBSFU example, and for the development kit, we deliver the full TFM. For the hands-on that is following this presentation, I put for you the TFM on the Nucleo, and I will explain what I have done in the hands-on. So if you just need a secure boot and secure firmware functionality, like the X Cube SBSFU you have seen on other platforms, SBSFU is for sure the packages that's more interesting for you. But if you want to have a full GFM, then go there. On the top, we've got some common parts that will be used by the SBSFU or by the GFM. So we've got the embed crypto that will be used inside the SBSFU boot, inside the GFM SBSFU boot, but also in the GFM app secure. When you've got some crypto services, it will rely on embed crypto. In the MCU boot, you've got uh, mainly the open source of uh, the MCU boot and that will be used by TFM SBSFU boot and SBSFU boot. In the trusted firmware, you've got 
the full GFM, though that means the middleware that used in the GFM middleware application. On the Nucleo, so as I previously said, here we just have the SBSFU. The folder linker, you can find the memory mapping, so it's where you find two headers that explain on where you can activate the different functionality and where you can set uh, the size of the different slots. So, quite interesting folder. And have a look please in the readme.txt at the top. Here you've got all the description how to compile, flash and set the option by to make this uh, package functional. Then in the SBSFU boot, you've got the Secure the sources, and you also have a readme.txt with some imp detailed implementation. Then we've got the secure application, which is only a services secure GPIO toggle, and you've got a non secure application, which is a, just an example, which is quite similar with the XSBS if you want, from the functional point of view. But we will experiment this after in the hands on. The last one, it's this possible SBSF loader, quite important, so it's rely on Y modem in our example, but you can modify it to put whatever you want. And you've got a secure and non-secure part because here you will need to write in the secure flash. So that's why we've got these services that could be called by this non-secure application. Now for the GFM, so it's targeting the development kits. The, I will say the architecture is nearly the same, this linear folder with a different activation of functionality and also uh, the memory mapping. The readme.txt again at the top where you've got all the information to compile and to flash. Then we've got the GFM SBSFU boots. We've got the application secure. So in the application secure this time we've got all the GFM services plus the GFM core. And the non-secure application which is just a code example. And we've got this TFM loader. This time it's just a non secure application and no need to write in the take your flash because all the download uh, slot will be in the non secure flash. If I do a quick comparison between SBSFU versus TFM, so what we have seen this morning, the SBSFU have the same functionalities as TFM SBSFU. The security evaluation is CZIP level 3 for this, and we've got some key management services uh, on L4. For the GFM, we've got the boots for sure, but we have all those security services on those one as certified PSI level 2. So we achieve this certification on the STM32 L5, and I think we are the first company to achieve this level of certification. So it's level of certification with isolation level 2. Also, but no link between the certification level and uh, isolation level. Here I put for you the useful link. For sure, the first one is quite interesting and you will have many details about the GFM, the implementation and where are the different information on architectures. Uh, the overview of this application note is more a comparison between the SB XSBSFU and the GFM and you also have Oh, I put again the ARM and the trusted firmware uh, link documentation. As conclusion, I will say that TFM is a secure boot, basically, with secure firmware update capability, but it also has many security services uh, during the runtime, and it relies on a PSS standard defined by ARM. It's an open source project. It was targeting IoT system, but it can be adapted to other systems also. Uh, the STM32L5 GMFM implementation shows the usage of all the STM32L5 security features to achieve the PSI certification level 2. So, this package should help you to achieve this certification if you want to do it. But we also deliver for you a basic secure boot, secure firmware update without the services if you need it. Thanks for your attention.